Are you ready to experience a life of divine health, vitality, and victory? Introducing the Harvest of Health Package, a collection designed to empower you and elevate your health. Turn on healing scriptures and let the Word of God guide you on a journey of faith and healing. Listen as Kenneth Copeland reads anointed healing scriptures. Defeat doubts and receive your healing, allowing the transformative power of God's Word to get into your heart and flow through you. Explore the profound revelations in Jesus Healed Them All, a book by Gloria Copeland. Discover the will of God in action through the ministry of Jesus. Dive into overwhelming scriptural evidence that without a doubt, it is God's plan to heal today, just as in the time when Jesus healed them all. And for those committed to living in divine health every day, the Harvest of Health mini book by Gloria Copeland is your guide. Don't wait for an emergency. Start feeding on healing scriptures now. Learn how to sow the Word of God into your heart and reap a harvest of health in your life every day. Because now is the time to embark on a journey to a healthier, more abundant life. Order your free copy of the Harvest of Health package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries, including the You Are Healed brochure packed with related healing scriptures. Feed your spirit on the Word and stay ready to reap your harvest of health every day. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Welcome to Friday's edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons. This is my husband, Pastor George. I'm a very submissive wife, and he recommended that I tell you how wonderful he is, and I want to do what he told me to do. And so he, he truly is wonderful and humorous and creative and smart, good looking. <coughs> oh, oh. Wait, it's, it's, did I oh get... that's enough. That's enough. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We have so much fun doing this, and we're glad that you I'm very entertaining at home, too. (laughs) As I was saying, we do have a lot of fun doing this, and we're really glad that you joined us today here on the BBOV because you will get a solid half-hour dose of victory. That's right. The believers have a voice, and it is the voice of victory. And we want to help (laughs) equip you with that victory from the Word of God and His promises, and that's why we're giving you this package, this Harvest of Health package. So as you've already seen, you could just go to the information on your screen, and that's how you can get yours for free. We want to be a blessing to you. These two little books, this pamphlet, and Brother Copeland reading healing scriptures. How great is that to have Brother Copeland reading healing scriptures to you when you need it the most? So we've been talking about this week how to keep your healing. If you've lost it, how to get it back. And we've been through a number of notes. These notes are available on kcm.org, so you can go ahead and download them, get them for free. You can follow along these broadcasts with them. And you can use them for your own personal Bible study. And especially if you're at a point where you may have been healed and you lost that healing, it's time to get it back. And that's what Monday through Thursday has been all about. And here we are at Friday. We've talked about major keys to keeping your healing. And one of them was resisting the devil. Another one was holding on, holding on to the word. Hold fast. Hold fast. Hold (laughs) fast. Holding on. I got that song in my mind. Hold (laughs) on. Hold fast to the word of God. And then we must refuse to fear. And that was so good yesterday. It was. Bringing that out about taking our stand and refusing to fear because God is for us. He's not against us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we don't have to fear. Healing belongs to us. Yes, and we, as Pastor said, you can go download the notes, but you know, you can get notes from broadcasts before that. Even when we were teaching on the 10 days of healing, those are still there, those broadcasts are still available. Uh, KCM.org, you can go back and listen to and have that word playing in your ear in some, some way, some form, go to our shopping cart, whatever it takes to get the word where you have it at your fingertips, download it onto your phone, whatever you need to have that word going in your eyes and ears all the time. So here we are, Pastor George, on Friday to mm-hmm. wrap this up. So I have a question for you. Yes, and I'm, I'll do my best to have an answer. What do you do after you're healed? That is really an important important element, and not only after you're healed, but just after you've released your faith 
for your healing. Yes, That yes, helps yes. you hold steady, hold fast as we've talked about. But then as your healing is manifest, whether it was something immediate over a process of time, there are some things that we can do that help us stay in that place where God is continuing to work, where the word is working and, and the promises of God, they don't just start and end, but that they are at a constant, um, constant motion in our lives. That's right, and we can, we can see from the scriptures that when people were healed, after Jesus would lay hands on someone, there were certain things that they did that give us the major clue of what we should be doing yeah, as well. what we can do. <clears throat> so, uh, for instance, Acts 3, 8. And he leaping up stood, this was the lame man at the gate, he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping. So, what do we have here? Praising God, being, and that, praising God is, is, I think you could say it this way, maybe in two parts. There's a, the time where we're praising God, we're saying thank you, God, mm-hmm. taking time to, to, to walk the floor in your room, in your living room or kitchen yeah. or wherever, yeah. walk outside just praising God out loud. Thank you, Lord. I thank you that you're my healer. I thank you that you're my deliverer. I thank you for your word. Thank you for what Jesus did. I thank you for the covenant. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for the name. I thank you, Lord, that you helped me and that you were with me and that you brought me out and saying those things. But it also speaks to an attitude of gratitude, that it's not just the moments, minutes, or, or even a block of time alone but it's constantly watching for the thankfulness to be thankful to God. I am so thankful that he that I have breath today. Yes. I am Praise thankful God. for what Thank he's you, provided. Lord. I'm thankful. <clears throat> I'm thankful for you. Yep. I really I'm am. I'm thankful for you. I am, and I'm thankful for for this um, broadcast. I'm thankful for the word and just to be thankful for people and be right. thankful for the blessing of the Lord yeah. keeps us in that attitude. Now, there's something else I want us to see from that scripture, okay. too. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and went to church. Went to church. Went into, <laughs> went the, into temple. the temple with them. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole he other, didn't, that's another point that's following. It'll yeah. follow, but but I just want you to see yes, that because exactly. I don't think we cover it there. No, but, but I, I saw it when I read it, too. I think that that's so significant. So many people want their healing in a drive-by, like you would order a, a, a sandwich or a coffee to drive through, grab yeah. my healing, and then, okay, see you next time I he, want one. That's not what he did. He went with them. Yep. He went with them into the temple. And, and again, we'll cover this a little bit later, but boy, I can remember after I got saved, I had great hesitation about going to church. And it took somebody uh, really encouraging me. And they came by, they picked me up, they took me to church, and I was so glad that I went. And that was, that was 1972, 1972. And I have been going to church ever since and enjoying it and knowing the benefit of it. Here, John 5, 14 in the New Living Translation, afterward, Jesus found the man who was healed at the pool of Bethesda in the temple, there we go again, and told him, now you are well, so stop sinning, or something even worse may happen to you. It's good to know that sickness is a result of sin. Now it's just in the world, sickness is out there. It's, you know, if you read too many articles, you'll find out that it's in the air, it's in the water, it's in the food, it's, <laughs> it's in people's thinking, it's in, it's, it's in our culture, it's just out there. That's a result of Adam's sin. But your own sin, the sin where disobedience, not walking in love by the, the commandment of love, doing things you know you have no business doing, that the word of God's very clear, and he says don't do them, why? Because he don't want you to have any fun? No, because it'll kill you. It's sin because it will kill you. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it Mm -hmm. sin. Mm -hmm. And he knows, you don't always know, but he does. And so clearing life of of sin and, and walking after him and pursuing him and his life, the way he thinks, the way he talks, the way he lives, 
doing that puts you in a position to maintain the, the healing flow in your life as well as the prosperity flow right. and the joy right. flow and the, the flow of heaven in your life. Again, that going to the point of church, they brought him, he, he went in the temple. You know, the, so, I think I should add right there, George, that, that we stop sinning, but, and when you do, repent. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. It means turn around and go the other way. It means let go of that. It means to say, oh, God, forgive me. Mm -hmm. I messed up. That wasn't right. Even the tiniest things. Unrepented of sin can build up and interfere with your ability to hear from him, to use your faith, release your faith, and you get stumbled up and you don't even know why. So we stay in a constant mode of, oh God, just I, I shouldn't have done, I, I wanna be more sensitive, Lord. And we plead the blood of Jesus. That's, right. That's our forgiveness. It cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for cleansing me of everything that's not just like you. Luke 17, 14. This is the New Living Translation. He looked at them and said, go show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. Now, there we're talking about testifying. It's a testimony, you know. You have to be careful who you testify to. The Bible says don't cast your pearl before swines. What does that mean? Well, pigs don't know what to do with pearls. And so be careful in your testifying that you don't put that in front of somebody uh, that doesn't know what to do with it, that can just be, be led in that. But this is to the priest. So, you know, that's a good place for your, your church leaders, for a, your faith buddy, your, maybe it's your spouse, your children, your family, but who, somebody who knows and can thank God with you. Now, there's a time we give our testimony as a witness to other people, that's mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. But this is a testimony and to declare before God and before somebody, I have received. Look at what the Lord has done. That's right. Terry, we draw strength spiritual strength by what we're connected to. You and I have been connected together and been have connected with this ministry for so many years. Mm -hmm. And we've been connected with church, we've been connected with teaching and listening to the messages and really dedicating ourselves to the Word of God. So it's important what you do after you're healed and what you feed yourself spiritually. And the things that you're doing and the things that you're involved in to be able to hold on to that and have a continual awareness of the presence of God. You know, there's a scripture in Proverbs that says the, the borrower is servant to the lender. That's not just a financial statement. It's indicating to us that you become mm. who you're connected to. And evil will corrupt mm. a lot of times before yep. righteousness has an opportunity to take root. If you're going to a church that's telling you healing's passed away or you never know what God's gonna do, if you're going to a place that's not using the word of God as the authority, the final authority in what they're preaching, if you're, these days, if you're going to a church and they're preaching things that are flat out, you know they are not the word of God, get out. Yeah. Get out yeah. and watch where your connections are, where your, your soul connections, what are, you, what are you listening to? And that goes for worldly things too. You know, some, not everything that just because it's not bad doesn't mean it won't be a drain. The drain on you spiritually. If you're enter, entertaining yourself all the time, whether it's your phone or video games or books or movies or TV or, or sports, athletics, shopping, whatever's got your attention the most is what will show up in your life. And it's very hard to call on, you know, the, the star of the latest Friday night TV show for your healing. You're not likely yeah. to get any help there. <laughs> right. Right. So where you're connected and who you're connected to is vital to your ongoing uh, life in God, whether it's receiving healing, keeping your healing, or ministering healing. Yeah. You have as much responsibility for that as you do to receive. Never let the things of God end with you. They should come to you and then go through you to somebody else. And staying connected yeah. to a church mm -hmm. and other ministries mm -hmm. 
That, that's essential. It's, it is essential. We're part of the body, yep. and we're supposed to be divinely connected. That's right. So we receive, but we also give into that church. We give into that ministry. We supply into those ministries of our finances, of our faith, of our praying. That's, Ben, that's Bible right there. We don't have time to talk about that much today. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's huge. The Bible says when we hook up with somebody, we draw from their grace. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, the ministry gifts, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, pastor. the pastor, those are all gifts. It says it in Ephesians, those are gifts. Gifts from and Jesus. And they're gifts to you. And I, I want us to really talk now about the importance of attending church and the importance of having a pastor. And like Pastor Terry said, it really does, it really does matter where you go to church. What do they believe there? What, are the, what is the belief system there? At Eagle Mountain International Church, of course, our belief system is based in the word of faith. That's what we teach. Uh, of course, that would be strange for us to teach anything other than that mm -hmm. because of the founders and their part in that church. So I'll use EMIC as, a, as an example. We are a, a healing, believing, teaching church. We believe that it is God's will for people to be healed. You'll never hear me stand up in the pulpit and say, well, you just don't know whether it's the will of God for you to be healed or not. No, we do know, according to the word and according to what Jesus did, we do know. So that's why it's so important to have that kind of atmosphere and an atmosphere of people who have been taught that, who can support you and help you in that. We were talking to somebody the other day who was having some physical challenges and they were going in for an operation and they were talking to us about their family. Mm. and how their family was really speaking negatively about their situation, and that's why they came to us. The family of God. The family of God. Uh, yeah, and to, yeah. to get in an atmosphere of, of faith, get in an atmosphere of the Word, get in an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit can move. Uh, and not, maybe you live somewhere and think, well, there's not a Word of Faith church well, ask the Lord. There may be one that, that you're just unaware of. Maybe your prayers will help bring one. And I think it's important that you remain in fellowship, if at all possible, with believers. That's important that you give into um, your church community. At, at some point, there is a line where you just can't stay there anymore. Now, I'm not saying everything they preach and say should, sure. should line up with us or with us or anybody else, but you can tell and the Lord will lead you to know when when staying in that church, especially when it's full of strife and division, and the Lord isn't leading you to help uh, turn to help that church turn the corner by bringing the word to them. But boy, you have to be led in all of that. and he will lead you and he'll <laughs> say, no, you need to give this a certain amount of time and and try to present the word there, or he may lead you and say, no, you need to get out. Uh, but, but even if you're in a church that's not as strong on healing as you would like for them to be, then you be sure that you are feeding yourself right. on faith, whether it's, you know, whether it's EMIC or Brother Copeland on the package that we're giving you, your Harvest of Healing package. There's really no excuse. If you've heard this broadcast today or any of them, there's no excuse for not having materials right. that you can feed your faith, mm -hmm. feed your spirit yeah. on, on the word of God and be strong in the Lord. Exactly. It says in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another as so much the more as you see the day approaching. I love what Mark Hankins <laughs> says about that. He said, you know, people say, well, I don't need the church. I can just worship God by myself at home. Well, apparently God didn't think so because yeah. it's written right yeah. here in Hebrews. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves. You assemble together. That's up to you. And he, so he said, some assembly is required. Yeah. So <laughs> as being a part of the body of Christ, some assembly is required. And frankly, there are times when God has something for you and the answers you need and he, he is not uh, obligated to get it to you any other way than the way he decided yeah. 
which would be right there in the midst of a congregation of faith. And maybe there's something there you don't like, somebody you don't like. A friend of ours, David Welsh in Australia, <laughs> and our office manager there, director, and he said, he told the Lord, I don't like going to church. That's hard, I don't like some of those people. And the Lord said, that's exactly why you need to be in church. What better place to develop the <laughs> yeah. walk of love. Yeah. And not just, there, you're not there just for them to love you, Bubba. You are there to love them and to learn to love them. Oh. The church is a place that is designed to feed you, to nourish you, to guide you, to lead you, and help you grow in the things of Develop. God. Develop. And from week to week to week, that's why we have our congregation, and the congregation comes to church every week, and they're being fed by their pastor because their pastor is praying for them and receiving from the Lord what they need. And this, in Psalm 92, 12 through 15, this is a picture of a person who attends church on a regular basis and is fed, and a person who maintains their healing. It says in the Amplified Translation, the uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, be long-lived, stately, upright, useful, and fruitful. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, majestic, stable, durable, and incorruptible, planted in the house of the Lord. Did you hear that? Planted, rooted, grounded, in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Growing in grace, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be full of sap. You sappy thing, you. <laughs> I know it. Of spiritual vitality and rich in the vidur of trust, love, and contentment. They are living memorials to show that the Lord is upright and faithful to his promises. He is my rock and there is no un unrighteousness in him. That statement there, planted in the house of the Lord, that is why it's so important after a person is healed, they just keep going back and being fed and encouraged and built up and strengthened in the things of God so that you don't lose the healing that God has given to you. Amen to that, Amen. Brother. And so as we prepare on this Friday to receive our offering, I, I wanna go back to a place where I just was in the book of Philippians. Let me read this to you. <clears throat> the Philippians were very close partners with the Apostle Paul. And it says, and now you Philippians know, this is Philippians chapter four, verse 15. Now you Philippians know that also in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire that fruit may abound to your account. I have all and I abound, I'm full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which are sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This is written to the Paul's partners that he had, that they were the ones that were communicating with him and giving into his ministry. In the first chapter in Philippians, Paul said, I'm convinced of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue all the way to the day of Jesus Christ. It's right for me to think this of you and have this confidence because you have me in your heart and I hold you in my heart as partakers and sharers, one and all with me of God's grace. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's we are partakers, yeah. one of the other, one with the other. Right. Partaking of grace back and forth, giving and receiving. Yes, that's absolutely right. And, and this right. money, it's not about just wanting money, but I'm telling you, you can't do this without money. They didn't anybody hand us this airtime or this broadcast or this studio. But it isn't about that only, but God has always made money and supporting the gospel a heart matter. He, he says, your, your uh, heart will follow your treasure, not the, just the other way around. Right. Put your money where your heart is, you, you'll, your heart will enlarge. If you 
put your money somewhere, it will draw your heart into it, as well as the heart of God. That's right. Okay, and mm-hmm. sometimes, I know that the Bible's full of bringing offerings, the Old Testament's full of that, where they would bring an offering as a thanksgiving to God for what he had done. Maybe you need to give into this ministry today because of what you've received this week, because you've received healing, or because you've learned something, or yep. it's helped you. Yep. That's a good reason to do it. Bringing it to other people, that's a good reason to give. And to give, this, this, uh, somebody used to say, give like you mean it. You know, so they <laughs> yeah. give till it hurts. No, I don't believe no. in that. No, no, I don't no, believe no, in that. No. But, but, but if, you didn't, if you didn't notice your giving, neither did God, but to give like you mean it yeah. and let God then respond to you. And if the Lord allows you, you can become a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. This ministry is doing so much as the CEO and CVO, Chief Visionary Officer of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, we see the whole thing. And this word is going out all over the world, for literally from the top to the bottom, all the way around the middle. And there is so much that's happening through KCM, EMIC, KCBC, and the Victory Channel, as well as our international office offices. When you sow into the ministry, you're sowing into good soil, soil that produces good fruit. And that good fruit is changing people's lives and turning their lives around with the word of faith, the word of faith, which we preach. That's right. So you can, you can you be can a be part of this with us. you can be preaching it with us by sowing into it financially. Pastor mentioned being a partner. You know, you could just sow into a, a gift here and from time to time, that's great. But to be a partner, you say, I'm gonna pray for you. Yeah. I'm gonna give regularly and support you. And together that hooks us up on this Philippians, book of Philippians level, like the Apostle Paul did with his partners. We pray for our partners all every the time. There's day, prayer going on in the, the ministry. Time, all Kenneth over the and place. Gloria pray for partners every day day, every meal, every meal they sit at, every time they go preaching. I've been on the airplane when we've gone off to preach somewhere. Brother Copeland prays the prayer of protection and prays for our partners. So you are covered in when you prayer. join up with Kenneth so Copeland Ministries. So as you Ministries. sow your seed today, we believe God for the multiplication. That as you give to God, boy, he responds back in, 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 in heart, in anointing, and in prosperity and increase. Hey, we'd love to hear from you what you've gained this week. And if you've enjoyed having Pastor George and I on here, we love you. And it's been our privilege to be here. And we thank God for this opportunity. One more time to tell you this. God, God loves, loves you. you. We, we love, love you. you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland would like to thank you for praying and sowing into Kenneth Copeland Ministries. We are believing with you for your abundant harvest. To sow your financial seed, you can text the letters KCM to 36609, go online to kcm.org give, or call 800-600-7395. Your giving has helped send the word of faith from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around the middle. Welcome to KCM.org, your study center for victory. Get information on what partnership means and take advantage of the resources provided just for you. Build your foundation in the Word with the online learning center of video courses, Believer's Academy, Bible School from right where you are. Gain access to Kenneth Copeland's partner letter, each letter written to meet the everyday needs of our partners. Download free books from the bonus library with over 50 titles by the Copelands available to read on your phone, computer, or e-reader. KCM.org meets you where you are.